<laughs> okay, uh, <clears throat> and, and you can clarify if I'm going off topic. This thing of, of, of jumping without yeah. knowing that there is a net provided by, by God. Um, I think it, it's, it's a very, it's, it's, you know, one way to describe it is for me to talk about some of my experiences with money and, and God and, um, <clears throat> uh, and my deep conviction that the, the support of God is directly related to the connection to God or the, the level of consciousness. Um, so uh, for, for many people I think who be uh, who come to this group and who are very attracted have had periods where they've had deep, profound spiritual experiences, even if it's for a period or if for a day, where there are these mystical flow states where everything there is like it's the absence of the ego, and everything is and there's a, a, a beautiful timeless unfolding that's witnessed of the universe and everything mystically falls into place. Uh, you know, it could be just for the day while you're in that state or day after day or week after week, whatever it is. And as I read Hawkins, I knew that in that place one is at the highest level and everything is provided for. There, there is no fear at all. There is implicitness. In fact, there's no ego there. Everything just is like the, the body uh, just orchestrates. If words are meant to be said, they just come out of the mouth and everything just flows by and uh, there's a oneness with the universe and every, there's absolute care. And then there's levels, you could say levels of disconnection or lower levels of consciousness when suddenly the thinking, one becomes more identified with the thoughts, the future and the past become more a thing that's happening and there's a lot of projection about what can go wrong and what could go wrong and there's deeper levels of visceral fear and terror uh, with constant uh, and constant need to keep hold of things and to make sure one is safe by whatever mechanisms, whether they be addictive or financial. So it was my absolute conviction that it's the level of consciousness which will then orchestrate the level of care in this area around money and work. Um, and I do think it's a bit of like a chicken and egg. You know, if I, if I stay in fear and paranoid thinking and, uh, and need to be told that everything's going to be safe, um, I'm not going to get that. I usually won't get that from the universe that says, you know, jump and I'll give you, God will suddenly say, I'll write you a guarantee, I'll, I'll catch you and make sure you've got enough money at the end of the month to pay your rent and to pay your bills and, and to live. So I'm currently, you know, so it'd be like for me, this jumping, if, I, I knew intuitively if I stay in fear and disconnection and paranoid thinking, you know, um, that will lead to this further destruction and me going down even further. Uh, and so, uh, and as I'm more cut off from the grace, uh, things will, you know, even though I've got very little I'm holding on to, what little I'm holding on to will, will be taken away from me. So it's a chicken and egg situation. Do I jump or do I not jump? Or how far do I jump? You know, and the ego then wants to hold on to its mechanisms, like, uh, and, it, um, and, uh, and there was, uh, I'll, I'll speak from my own story. So I, you know, I was working in the stock market and, uh, uh, and I was doing, I mean, you could say I was doing really, really well. They loved me. I was a workaholic, extreme workaholic, had two pay rises. Uh, I was senior analyst. I had two juniors under me. Uh, the boss loved me because I was the most extreme worker in a, in, a, in a place full of extreme workers. So that's pretty good. That's doing something in that stock market career. But I burnt out and got kidney failure and was nearly dead. Uh, but uh, did, um, and you know, my whole thing there was money. You know, and money and all the time I'd spent all these years to get that job and all the qualifications and all the fantasy of the glamorous lifestyle in the stock market that uh, you had watched in Hollywood movies and the pump. So my whole identity was wrapped up in that kind of identity and it was lost, you know, kidney failure. But still it was like the ego was so ferocious, you know, even kidney failure, if there was a way of suddenly fixing the situation, kidney failure and just getting back 
in the career. But I knew, spiritually speaking, I couldn't be in a, in a, in a vibration that was, wasn't sitting well with me any longer. But I wanted to get back into that high performance thing. And I go, and at that time I didn't, I wasn't aware of Hawkins and I, I thought if, if I, the doctors could just about put me, that had a little bit of stroke, but not, not enough really. And I got a job in ethical fund management. You know, they said yes, uh, they, they gave me a break. Uh, and I thought, okay, is there a spiritual area of the stock market which is not so money greedy orientated? And I thought, these guys want to do good in the world. They were about money by ethical investing. That's the only thing I could do. So I got a job in there. They gave me a job. Uh, it was, it was, um, and I won't go into the long story. But then, uh, you know, the thing with that culture is you've got to be a workaholic, even in the ethical fund management. You can't be like coming in at nine o'clock and I'll just take my shoes off and leave at five. And so, you know, the, I mean, it was all going well. And then one day, I, you know, still very, very ill and very, very sick and depleted. And one day, I knew I didn't have any energy left. I knew I had to leave at five o'clock, otherwise I'd be putting myself, uh, killing myself. I wanted to have that break. I wanted to carry on working in the glamour of the stock market. I didn't want to like mm -hmm. be taken out. I already spent a few months with nothing on my CV. My head was going like, oh God, we've already had one break. You've just got another break. So you've got to make this work. You've mm -hmm. got to perform. You can't just suddenly get released from another, another company in the stock market, even though I thought it was more spiritual. And then I had to say to him, because I feel I was like, I was dying, you know, I can't stay, I can't work till 9, 10 o'clock. So I said to my, so my manager who was supervising me, I said, I'm leaving at, at 5, I just told him, I'm leaving. And he gave me the look, and I knew that look is, you're going to be fine soon. <laughs> he gave me the look, like, you're telling me you're leaving at 5 o'clock. I said, I'm leaving now at 5 o'clock. And then the review period came, and it was like, oh, yeah, you know, um, well done on your project, but, uh, you know, we're not keeping you, which is fine. You know, and I was gone, and that was it. That was the end of my thing. But there was still that grip to go back and to to live that identity. Anyway, um, and then I, you know, then I got exposed. I got met a guy who introduced me to uh, Dr. Hawkins, and also another spiritual teacher in London. And uh, and then I got into the spiritual. I knew that no, if I hold on to this fear, and I carry on working in these disconnecting environments, that totally disconnect me and spiritually bankrupt me that is not sustainable, you know, and I have to, I have to be, I have to place my faith in God, and not just place my faith in God, I have to be in environments which spiritually support me, even if it, even it's at risk of losing everything, because only that connection to God will bring me good, good stuff, and if I keep in environments that disconnect me, I will not, if I choose anything that disconnects me severely, uh, in any way, then, you know, I'll be dead. You know, I just will not survive. So I had no choice, you know, I just cannot allow myself to get disconnected. I have to go higher and higher spiritually and hope that God will take care of me. And, I, you know, it doesn't sound very, very nice. I mean, as, you know, I, I sort of, uh, but with my family, um, I, haven't really, I don't normally talk about it on camera, but anyway, I'll talk in a uh, gist of it. So it was like, uh, uh, the thing came by, oh yes, I was doing my spiritual groups and uh, my mother sort of said to me, I was going to these spiritual groups and they were looking after me and, uh, and she said, oh, I found out one of your groups is a cult and you shouldn't be going there any longer and we're going to get like a, a Muslim imam to teach you the Quran, you know, you need to sort of learn the Quran. I said, no, I said, no. I knew that learning the Quran and stopping going to those places I was going to, I was going to 12 step groups, of course, and micro groups, and that, that you know, that's apparently I was going to, to some kind of cults. Uh, and uh, I knew that that wouldn't work for me, like getting an Imam come in, just teach me the Quran. I knew that that wouldn't be, wouldn't be right. So I just defied her and said, look, I'm going to carry on. And it was very, very heated, you know. Um, I won't go into how heated it was to defy her at that time but it was it was like you know potentially um i was relying on her a lot um so anyway so i still carried on and so there was visceral fear that i'll have nothing by defying her and i was very very weak and ill and i, I and i chose i knew that i cannot let myself get disconnected and i said to myself even if i you know if i, I lose my family i lose my home or whatever happens you know and i'm on the streets 
I will not allow myself to get disconnected and I'll trust in God. Um, and, and, and that's what I did. You know, it was terrifying. You know, the terror of not, if you've got, if you've got support anyway, financially or a home or whatever it is, and to say that I cannot allow myself to be disconnected, I must have the maximum connection to God. And in that place, it's like jumping off a cliff. Mm. You know, if I become homeless, it's like, you know, I will not allow myself to disconnect, I just hope God will get me. And anyway, um, I did that. And well, my experience with money is like you have, is like you have to, you can't like ask for a guarantee before you jump. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, that doesn't, that, that has never been my experience. It's like, it's difficult, God, so just can give me, can I win the lottery now? It's like, no, you've got to like jump, put your faith. You know, for me, it was like, I cannot allow myself ever to allow myself to feel disconnected. I must, even if I'm on the street with no money, if I can pray and meditate, and, uh, and keep, keep a state of peace, even if, if nothing happens and the body decays, I would not allow myself to be in any environment where I'm disconnected. And you know, as soon as I, and I had, and I had to walk, walk through the terror for a period of time, like it's looking even worse now that I've made this choice, and the terror increases, and it's like the loss of all hope, and you're worst, and it's like the worst, and I've seen this over and over again in life, it's like just about, catastrophe is about to happen and you, and and you, all your safety nets are about to fall and it's always like you know it's like God says ha 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 at the last second <laughs> I got you you know it's like suddenly everything just suddenly changes you know and everyone loves you and uh, and everything's fine and uh, and uh, you walk through the fear and you clear the fear and then miraculously everything shifts and uh, and that that was one situation and that is my experience, you know, of, um, it's not like a happy clappy story of like there's an easy way. It's like uh, you have to, in my experience, I had to jump and I had to see that potentially nothing might save me except for God. And potentially uh, I might be on, you know, potentially I could be homeless with, with nothing and very, very ill. But if my faith, but I knew as well that uh, Hawkins said something about if you allow yourself to get disconnected in an environment over and over again, you know, there's no hope. Because, you know, I have to get, I have to start vibrating at a higher level than I currently am to call in God's help. It's a vibrational thing. If, I'm in, if I sit in an environment where people are, uh, where I'm getting severely disconnected every single moment, um, and uh, I can't meditate and people are shouting and screaming at me and I can't spiritually connect, I've got no space to do it. Then I'm at the lowest vibration. That vibration is death. So sometimes it seems like there isn't a cosy option to, to get a higher spiritual connection. And sometimes you're forced, I was forced into that. But I think when, you, when I'm, when there, you know, my, my experience has always been that when, you, when I choose God in faith, and I do not, and for me that's choosing something that I do not get disconnected and I can practice my spirituality and not get disconnected, even if under terrible circumstances, like, and then you have to like almost walk through the fear for a period of time, almost like walking into absolute doom and can and carry on walking. And then at the last minute, it's like something clears. It's like you have to walk through the fear. It's like you jump off a cliff. It's quite literally like, you're falling like mile after mile, and it's taking forever. And you're seeing the ground getting nearer and nearer. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, a safety net sort of is there at the last minute. And then like it's happy clapping, you know, like God got you. So it's not like you jump off and straight away, it's like it's happy clapping even. Mm -hmm. It's like you have to like, oh, no, the, 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 the ground's getting nearer and nearer and I can't see a net. And you're still in absolute terror. And then, and then at the last minute, it's like everything resolves. So it's like, you, you, it's like your bluff is called with your ego. I've seen that over and over again. Uh, and, uh, you know, once... But when I had that first experience, next time was easier. It's like, you know, I was working. And then I was going every day to my spiritual meetings and just abandoning work. Because I knew I needed that to stay, that, keep that spiritual connection. I need an hour out of my day and I'll take it. And I was doing that to keep my spiritual connection, because I know that if I, allow, if I just have a day of complete disconnection and don't allow myself to top up, then I know that that will destroy, because I've chosen disconnection. 
So I have to like fight, you know, but later it was easier and why I did fight and then I got even more money. I was in the B&B, bringing from Vile, I just go, I'd leave for three hours in the middle of the day, hundreds of pounds of business not taken in. I'd say no, either you come in the morning to customers or evening. I did that for a couple of years and then someone came in and offered to pay, take the business over and pay even more money than I was earning and I was doing even less work. So I saw the principle of do not allow yourself to be disconnected under any costs. Uh, and then I'd get even more prosperity and money coming in. In a slightly different area, it's not money, but those are my two money stories. You know, it's like, I remembered I had to, I knew I had to meet Dr. Hawkins to get his grace before I died. And I had the phobia of getting on airplanes. And I knew I wanted to meet him because I'd lost 70% of my kidneys on an airplane flight. So eventually the call was like, oh, okay, well, you might die, but you have to meet him. So if you die on the airplane, you just have to go through that fear. I remember I went on the aeroplane in absolute terror and I faced that terror because I it was like, no, I want, he was his God's representative on earth. Even if I die, it's worth dying to try and meet him, even if I can't have to face my, my uh, I nearly died on an aeroplane before thing. And actually, as soon as I faced that fear, it's like, you know, every, all the miracles were happening on the, on the other side. I'd chosen to go through my fear for God. It's like the miracles happened, I met him. And then he gave me the information and then all my illnesses cleared up, you know, that I was afraid of dying from. So that's the thing I've seen it over and over again. You have to like walk through the fear and choose the fear. Uh, part is choosing the fear and part of it is like environments which, when I, when I allow myself to stay in an environment which is disconnecting me, you know, it, like the Kundalini, the, the spiritual energy that runs up the spine, you know, we start to say Kundalini awakening because you're spiritually, you know, as you get more connected to God's grace, you get into these infinite states of flow. But if I'm choosing to be in an environment where I'm going to be disconnected left, right and centre throughout the day, and I'm not willing to let it go because out of fear that is giving me safety, you know, that for me is a choice. I don't know if I'm making sense, but, you know, it was like, I remember once Hawkins saying, like, if you watch a commercial, if you could check the muscle strength, anyone who knows what kinesiology muscle test, when you're, when you're connected, you stay strong, and when you get disconnected, like, there'll be so many, like, unconscious messages in an advert that often, like, you, your hand would go, if you check someone's hand, they'd go weak 15 times. You know, so if I'm in an environment which is, like, disconnecting me heavily, non-stop, yeah, um, you know, that will mean that my connection... And that connection, which you know, the, 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 which brings God's orchestration in my life, is getting disconnected over and over again. So it's like spiritual disconnection. So, you know, it's like choosing. But these, I mean, money is a visceral thing. I, I must agree. It's like life and death, you know. But um, so it's this thing, you know. The more I've gone through my fear with money, the more I know that God catches me. But in the first time, the first time you ever do it was the most uh, it was it was extremely terrifying, extremely terrifying. And then when I found out God would catch me, then there's much more conviction uh, to do it in the future. So uh, I shared my experience. I think, but yeah, this is the thing I would uh, yeah. And also, what I find is that before I would perhaps ask a question of this type, yeah, and then go to work and then submerge into that atmosphere, yeah. And then when I'm coming out of it, oh, I don't like this. But I would be unconscious whilst that was there. But now I feel like like God gives me messages within the way the people are. So they stand out like beacon. So if you have a beacon of light, if you meet a spiritual person, it's that, like they stand like dark beacons out. Mm. So when I was at the meeting, for example, they were discussing somebody really high up the highest position in the company yeah. and they were saying oh when that guy blows he blows and everyone went like this oh yeah, Are you okay? we're on, okay, yeah, yeah we've seen it yeah we've seen it and everybody goes and they discuss that like that's normal yeah oh when he goes you know isn't it that amazing did you see that yeah and i'm standing here thinking these people are insane <laughs> You know this whole concept. Yeah. This is not. This is not right. Not that they're insane. Just the whole concept yeah. of yeah. that. And I'm thinking, I don't want to be around that. Why? You know, why would I want to be around that? Absolutely. Um, you know. Hence, I was alluding um, when I was working in the stock market. You know, 
we were fish at a certain level of the sea and we were attracted to that environment. You know, there are certain environments which I work called very ego orientated. Mm. And I cannot, you know, I, you know, I've already almost died in those environments. Mm. So uh, it's just the knowing, you know. I, uh, my, uh, I think, you know, for this lifetime, I think God says, if I was to choose that again, that would be instant death. You know, so I've lost my thing of going back to those. So I have to choose environments of the light. But I have to like, you know, each time you go through fear for God and you see that God catches you, you get elevated to a new level. It's like I spend most of my days in spiritual groups, talking to spiritual people, watching spiritual videos and doing stuff. And I, I do a little bit of work for my father and a little bit of spiritual stuff. And that's like most of my days nowadays. But that didn't come straight away. Mm. That's like, you know, everything within your ego to choose, you know, like not to choose, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to watch horror movies. I don't want to listen to gangster rap music any longer. I don't want to watch. Um, so it's like, you know, the protection for my level of consciousness. I want to be in higher and higher states of consciousness because I know that making those choices so that you don't get disconnected. And there is another way you could say you could transcend everything, but I think that is not God's will for me to go into the darkest places of the stock market and play, transcend. It's to leave those places, that's the thing, and to choose more spiritual choices, mm. where then I have to transcend that and go to a higher level environment. And each time it gets... Um, and the other thing I say, like, when you have those states of flow, everything goes well. But when I, you know, like in my own experience, if I get disconnected now, I can see things start to shake. You know, I have to get back into a state mm. of flow very, very quickly. I cannot allow myself to get, because it's like the, the higher you go in level of consciousness, the more beautiful life becomes and the more easy life becomes. The more, and as soon as you get disconnected, you have to mop it up. And if you don't mop it up and you stay at a lower level, life starts to become more difficult. So you just have to mop it up quickly, forgive transcend, observe, feel it out, go back, and then you're back on the smooth, life is flowing by. So, uh, but uh, in every choice there are, like to choose to be in an environment which is very heavily ego-based, I think, you know, it's like, it's, for me, I'm just talking about myself, it would not be the right spiritual choice. You know, I mean, on a certain level you could say, yeah, I can go into the stock market and I'll just transcend it. But I think that wouldn't be, what would be my motive for trying to tr transcend being in the stock market? You know, so I'd want to be, I, I, it, it doesn't, it would be, the motive wouldn't be, wouldn't be right for me. Um, yeah. Mm.